this work is motivated by uh, the fact that I advocate strongly to statistical agencies and governments to report distributions, full distributions of primary outcome measures, be they life satisfaction or income or whatever, rather than trying to account for inequality with scalar indices. Think of something like a Gini. Uh, and in fact, I advocate for reporting distributions more and even avoiding reporting means for, uh, for these kinds of things. Uh, and I think that's the right way to report. So, uh, you know, I think the audience is ready to uh, in, in, interpret and, and absorb uh, seeing distributions. And I think that that is the right way to report a measure of human experience. Uh, you know, there's nobody who experiences a mean life satisfaction of 6.8. So the fundamental way to uh, re report the, the snapshot is the most basic thing is really a distribution. So then the question is, how well, wh how well do we understand the shape of distributions? In fact, are we even modeling, to what extent are, are we modeling distributions? Uh, I'll unpack that just a little bit. But um, I'm going to, uh, so I want to stare at this uh, which is the answer to a zero to 10 life satisfaction question, meaning taking all things into account, how satisfied are you with your life these days on a scale of zero to 10 uh, in Chinese, uh, in for an elderly rural population around Beijing. Uh, we took over two field seasons. See, and I, can you come up with a theory that explains the shape of this? Um, and I'm in fact going to skip over most of my technical slides today and just mostly we're going to be looking at distributions and thinking qualitatively about them. I will come back to some uh, sophisticated estimate at the end. But, um, okay, so looking at this, uh, you know, why is it not a bell curve? Um, let me just start with a time or two. Uh, if there was, I mean, you know, many processes give us single peaked, friendly looking distributions. Here, uh, you would say this is multi bubble. In fact, there's four different modes, right? There's a peak at zero, there's a peak at six, there's a peak at eight, there's a peak at 10. So, for anybody who's familiar with some of my earlier work on focal values, you might be looking for peaks at zero, five, and 10, which are the result of respondents implicitly choosing to simplify the scale for themselves for the cognitive reasons um, that you have described into a 3.0510 scale rather than using the full 11 point scale. Okay, so you can see there's an enhancement at zero. You can see there's also an enhancement at five in the sense that you know it's much higher than, than these, although six is higher, and there's an enhancement at 10, which, you know, so that sort of fits. But that doesn't explain everything um, because uh, so I would also say, looking at this, that four is sort of lower than you might expect on some kind of curve here. Um, and eight is really enormously high, and something's going on there, right? So when I first saw this distribution, and I knew this, this is our work from China, I thought, ah, eight is a lucky number. <laughs> okay, and the, you know, the Chinese numerology, actually two and six are a little bit lucky numbers as well, but eight and four are very, strongest uh, numbers in, in Chinese numerology. Ba sounds like fa, which is death, die. Uh, su sounds like su, which uh, is wealth or something like this. Okay, so people might actually have preferences over individual numbers on the scale. So my other work is, is saying, look, because some part of the respondents are simplifying the scale to do a three-point scale, that means we don't even have an ordinality um, we can't support an ordinality assumption in interpreting data. Uh, now this is something, you know, even worse, there might be intrinsic values or disvalues to individual answers. So, and the bigger question is, um, you know, how, so, I mean, of course, how important is this? Uh, but also, it's time to go and look more carefully at the international and cultural differences. In fact, John Halliwell referred to a chapter that we wrote together in 2010 
uh, in that book, International Differences um, in, in Well-Being. And he said that this morning, we put a question to rest of um, whether there are differences between life satisfaction and cancel ladder in the patterns response. So uh, you, 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 he's not here, but he should see that we, uh, 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 sorry, we put two things to rest, right? That was one. And the other is uh, differences around the world. So if we estimate a model explaining life satisfaction around the world, do we get more or less the same coefficients, the same patterns, you know, without which none of us would feel very confident in using the scale uh, if it didn't meet those kind of conditions. So, so, so it's time to look at that more quantitatively. Um, okay, have I beaten that? Oh yeah, no, I meant to say, by the way, you know, these, this, the shape of this thing, the first question might be asked, well, the sample size is 2,000. Uh, are these, is this pattern significant? Well, let me show you if I break it up by gender, uh, you know, the, the details are actually quite well reproduced. Um, but I'm not going to break it up by a bunch of other things right now. Let's go to... It's something with the nine they don't like, eh? <laughs> not, uh, not that I've noticed or I'm going to talk about. Yeah, just well, eight well, characters, I, I, I'm nine. from Japan, yeah. but uh, I can imagine nine means nine. suffering. Yeah. Means what? Nine means suffering in Japanese, but uh, also, uh, also in, in, in Chinese. Okay, ah, so, so <laughs> possibly. And yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let, let me keep going. Um, I'm actually not going to dwell on it. Uh, there's, so there's one more thing I want to point out, uh, just for the people who are running regressions, um, as context here, for how to model this kind of thing. Um, and that is that. So here's actually, okay, here's the same data. Now if I, uh, that I just showed you, I'm just gonna leave it on as an outline. Now, if I run uh, an OLS kind of regression, which assumes cardinality of these numbers, right? It means that my prediction looks something like this. It's a single peak that's, you know, well, it's a, it Gaussian. In fact, this is even without any predictors. If I just have a constant and a, an error term, I'll get this. Um, so I could have higher peaks on the zero and the 10 due to it going outside. But basically, it'll be, other than that, it'll be single peaks that look like this. If I add more predictors, shape doesn't change. It's just multiplying more Gaussians together. I still have a Gaussian. By contrast, if I use an ordered logit model, so I'm just using ordinality now, I can fit the distribution perfectly. Right? In fact, this is, I can do this without anything, without any predictors. Um, and that's because in ordered logit, you have cutoff points that are flexible to tell me how to split up um, the, the, you know, the linear part. And so I'm clearly, so if I add more predictors, I'm not doing any better, you know, for the distribution in this sense. So, um, so if you want to think about explaining the kind of features that I've just described, you know, we, we clearly need some other kind of structure built into the model, which, um, as I mentioned, I've already done some modeling for the 0, 5, 10 case, uh, which we'll come back to. Later. Okay, and I'm going to, I can't flip through this Microsoft thing and doesn't let me go quickly, but I'm not talking about these, so don't look at them. So they're very interesting, I'm sure. Okay, I want to get to, um, I just want to go through some country distributions. Um, yeah, so uh, this is now, okay, I'm going to look at um, WGS World Value Survey data for a bit. And this is the global distribution, although I already split it up by education. Uh, global meaning over the however many 60 countries or something from the last uh, few ways. And so this shows nicely, thank you, the, um, the fact that people with less education are more likely to simplify their sca the scale to this three-point version. So you see enhancements here at uh, WBS uses a one to 10 scale for life satisfaction, one, five, and 10. And you can see that somewhat goes away. So the people with more education, this is actually a university degree, so that's primary, secondary, uh, and, and complete the tertiary. Uh, they go away, as well as people getting a little bit happier. So you, know, you can see that the fraction of people reporting 10 is higher for lower educated um, than for the most educated. Excuse me, which country is this one? This is uh, an a average uh, across around the world. All Six, countries? Well, no, the ones in WBS, so about 60 countries. 60 countries. Yeah, and I'm going to split countries up now according to sort of cultural groups, you'll see. And let's just go through some of them one by one. Here's Ghana. 
So um, now, interestingly, in Ghana, that education effect is um, maybe there a little bit, but not so strong, right? So the focal values actually aren't very strong. Mali, totally different. So we have a very strong focal values effect, 1, 5, and 10 here for the less educated. And um, it's not completely gone here. Uh, you know, it's, it's, so it's uh, strong. OK, here's Nigeria. What do I want to say about that? I'm not sure. Rwanda. Um, uh, you don't have much of that effect at all. Um, okay, so, okay, look at Zimbabwe, where again you have um, uh, you have extremely strong focal values at the at, for those with the least education, and um, and you only get rid of it a little bit with with the middle uh, with secondary education. Um, Uganda doesn't seem to be the same kind of pattern now. Obviously, you know, it seems like there's an extra preference for five in addition to um, people simplifying to three point, so that you know you can expect there's other cultural reasons, like I showed you in China, where there might be some preference. So um, I don't know. And then Tanzania, which is actually a global standout, um, you can see a really radical use of zero um, and a strong cultural values, regardless of how much education people have. Almost right. Um, okay, France also, funnily enough, a lot of sort of comme comme ça. It seems like five is rather high. Um, and uh, Italy, very little of this effect. Um, okay, I don't know it's exactly which ones I, I, I uh, want to, to comment on, but you're just seeing a lot of variation here, right? Spain now, also relatively little uh, enhancement of these focal values. Um, here's China again, uh, you know, not as much as some other places, um, and you, but you can see maybe a, a pretty strong enhancement of eight. The case for four is not so clear. Uh, there's Japan. <laughs> you can, um, you know, definitely no effect left. Left. Thank you at the upper end. Okay, so I'm I'm well behind time. So there is. I do want to show you more of these, and I'm trying to think which ones I really shouldn't skip, um, but. Uh, Let's go and now look at some patterns. I guess you've seen enough to see that these are, uh, there's a lot of variation in these patterns. And I just can't go fast than this, <laughs> sorry. Oh, well, no, okay, so we're now in Latin America, uh, and I do want to pay attention here. Look at, have I already missed in Latin America? Okay, so there's a really strong preference for 10. I mean, look at the lowest education, how much uh, more likely they are to be at the top than others, but in fact, um, you know, that preference is there. And now you're going to see in the Latin American countries, that's not true everywhere, but it's really prevalent. Look at this, Colombia, um, very, uh, Mexico, crazy use of the top of the scale. Okay, and, um, and then, and then there be some, some of these have a very strong use of the middle. Okay. So it's just on happy places. Well, some are, but... Yeah, I mean, you've got to take into account, you know, if the, if, if, if the distribution now only peaked around the middle, you expect to have a lot of fives, but we're looking for things that don't seem to fit that very well. Finland, Finland okay, look. They're perfect. There's, they seem, this is the best education, also the happiest place, but one of the best education systems in the world. No focal values uh, choice even at the low yeah. end of the education system, right? Same with ne Netherlands as well. These Nordics. Okay, oh. That is looking mean. What if I press it doubly fast? It actually moves faster. That's very odd. Um, okay, yeah, so I guess I could have done that faster. So now I'm just going to show you a few scatter plots of some measures. So this is first, now this is not without a model, it's just a fraction of responses that are either 1, 5, or 10, just descriptive. Right? And so as a function of the average life satisfaction, and so you can see, look at these people at the upper end now. In the WVS VS data, it's actually not the Nordics who have the highest life satisfaction. Uh, it's, it's Latin American countries. That's unlike Cantrell Ladder, in which is what the Gallup World Poll uses. We'll flip this when we correct for the focal values, you'll see in a moment. Um, in any case, you see these very high levels of focal responses. I'm going to get shut down. Um, what was that? Oh, that was by education. I'll skip that. Okay, here now, let's just look again. Purely descriptive, no model, the fraction of responses that are at 10. Um, and you can see. Uh, you know, here's where Latin America just really stands out. So does Switzerland. 
which you know Switzerland is a country that's not Nordics, but it's sometimes up there in the Gallup World Poll ranking as well, by the way, and it needs to be fixed in this sense. Uh, that's the same thing by education. Now here's the fraction that are five. This is sort of more a little bit sensible measure of the mean, if you like. Um, so not too much counterintuitive um, variation there, and that's by education. And here's where is the fraction that are one? I must have missed it. Okay. So now, what I want to do is, um, that was all descriptive, now I want to bring a model in. You could probably please wrap up. <laughs> uh, and, and what the model does is, uh, is assume there are two types of people, those, with, those who are not happy with numbers with quantitative scale and those who are more comfortable. And it uses some variables, for instance, in particular education level to predict whether somebody's going to use a three-point scale or an 11-point scale or a 10-point scale. And then it uses also other predictive variables to predict the actual life satisfaction. So what's it's going to do? It's going to allow me to, um, to actually infer who is using which scale mm -hmm. and also to infer what they would have said, what the three-point people would have said if they were answering on the full scale. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be able to correct the life satisfaction responses in that sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now... Um, was this the first? Okay, so I just had a few couple slides left um, showing the result of those estimates. Here's the observed, here's the average reported response of each country, and this is the corrected life satisfaction. So this is what I think is actually the underlying thing that, that you know the people would have responded if they were. Now, so what it shows is that the the um, overestimate of life satisfaction itself is enormous. This is like 0.6 on the 10 point scale for, um, for some of these, which I can label them here. Oh, same thing, but now I've actually included the one that was too far for scale, that's, the, that's Tanzania. Uh, so it's, you know, it's got a very low reported life satisfaction, but in fact, it should be even lower. It's reporting four, it should be a three. Um, anyway, so these, these um, are over estimates um, and and what does it mean? It means that if you make the correction, you actually go from Latin America having high scores to Norway and Finland having high scores, which is what Gallup World Poll reports. So this is also a threat, actually, to us thinking that Gallup World, that, that uh, Cantrell Ladder and Life Satisfaction are really giving us um, the same measure. In other words, some of these effects may be less in Cantrell Ladder than in Life Satisfaction question. Um, so as well as, so I can estimate the fraction who are reporting on a simplified scale. Um, and I can also, as well as reporting bias in life satisfaction mean, I can estimate the bias in coefficients, the kind of coefficients that we estimate in the field, such as the, value, the effect of income. So here's the bias now in the effect of income. And my summary of this is just generally we underestimate the value of income in general because of this effect. In other words, uh, and we underestimate the value of education and here you can see that's especially um, stark for, um, for the same group of countries. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. And um, I already gave sort of some of the implications when I referred to, um, to us not examining enough the question of how, how much the response scale is different, how much people are answering the same question around the world. Um, and also, you know, this question of our two different versions of the cognitive life evaluation. Um, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.